A leading Indigenous thinker is calling for an end to race-based entitlement. At a speech in Melbourne last night, Professor Marcia Langton proposed a welfare system be developed that's based on economic need rather than Aboriginality. Professor Langton is from the University of Melbourne and she joins us now in the studio. Good morning, thanks for being here. Now this is no doubt a controversial idea but not a new one either, so why do you think the welfare for Indigenous people needs changing? Well, really my proposition is um, start somewhere else. Um, and that is that um, if we remove the uh, concept of race and the race power from the constitution, then we have to redefine how laws are made for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. It's difficult to take out one part of the constitution without affecting other parts of the constitution and there are hundreds of pieces of legislation that affect Aborigines. And so therein lies the nub of the problem. But if you take the view that Aboriginal people be defined or Indigenous people be defined as first peoples and not as a race, then there are a number of consequences. Um, and one of the consequences is that Indigenous people are given the same opportunities as other Australians to compete in a meritocracy. And so therefore, you wouldn't need to have um, programs based on race, you would have programs based on need. OK, well, let's strip it back. Why do you believe programs based on race are leading to a sense of entitlement among some members of the Indigenous community? Because that's my observation. That's what I've seen I, in my account delivered last night, I described situations in which Aboriginal people themselves feel that because they're Aboriginal, they, the state should be looking after them or that they have a bundle of entitlements that accrue to them because of the colour of their skin. So um, it's, it's actually um, doing damage to Aboriginal people because they feel that they don't have to compete in a meritocracy. What sort of damage? I mean, you've seen it personally. What, with this sense of entitlement, how does that affect life choices made by some? Well, I think if we ask ourselves why Aboriginal parents don't send their children to school, it's because they believe that because they're Aboriginal, they don't have to. Um, because they're Aboriginal, there would be no point in sending their children to school because there's probably no job for them. And that is the attitude that develops when people don't believe that they uh, are required, like everybody else, to participate in society and the economy. How would it work in practice? Um, in the same way that it works for you. So do you think it's a proposal that would be taken seriously by government? Um, I hope so. Um, most of the argument is set out in the report of the expert panel on the constitutional recognition of Indigenous Australians given to the Prime Minister in January. When you take the simple points made in the very large report rec to recognise Aboriginal Australians because they were here first, um, and remove the race power, therefore you're recognising Indigenous people as first Australians and not on the basis of race. It would be very difficult for a court to consider uh, any particular person, it doesn't matter who they are, on the basis of race in the 21st century, given all that we know about the human species and DNA and the human genome. It's an outmoded concept. It doesn't really mean anything. So you'd like to just withdraw benefits lock, stock and barrel or there'd be some dispensation for some members of the Indigenous community who can't necessarily just pick up That's where right. they are and go out and get jobs and send their kids to school because of immense levels of disadvantage. That's right. And that's what I mean by mm. basing welfare on need and not on race. And the same would apply to any other Australian. Um, yes, there, are, there is disadvantage. Um, and it's those disadvantages should that, that should be addressed. There's an attitude that um, Indigenous people can't really do it, can't really succeed at school, can't really do the job. And over time, without the race construct, with 
policies and legislation aligned to address disadvantage and not race, then and if you know all Aboriginal people were required to compete in the meritocracy, then teachers and employers would simply stop thinking that Aboriginal people can't make it. But Aboriginal people themselves have to believe that they can do it too. There's now a new government in the Northern Territory. Why do you think so many Aboriginal voters uh, voted against Labor? Um, <clears throat> I'm not really 100% sure at this stage. I'm waiting to see um, what people in the Northern Territory say. But the swing in some seats was 16%. So I am pretty sure that, one, it would be women voting uh, to keep the intervention um, because they are very pleased with the... Uh, alcohol restrictions policies, mm. the income management and so on. What do you say to those who say that uh, Labor lost largely due to the intervention and the policies contained in it? Um, the only thing that's true about that statement is that the government in the Northern Territory didn't handle the intervention competently. And so, for instance, uh, uh, Alison Anderson, yep. uh, who, who left the ALP, crossed the floor, became an independent and then joined the CLP and has, I presume, been re-elected. Um, was dissatisfied with the go the government's um, handling of the housing policy. So I think the Northern Territory government only has itself to blame because they didn't take the intervention seriously and, and do a competent job. On the other side of the border in Western Australia, houses have be been built very, very quickly. Um, but in the Northern Territory, it, it seems to be a, a bit of a mess. I think the main problem was actually the super shires. The Labor government shut down all of the community councils and amalgamated them into just a few large shires and took away any sense of control from the people in the communities. And the new government promised during the campaign to, uh, to pay attention to them, to, uh, to meet directly with the communities and to do something about that problem. And I, I think that was probably the big ticket item. Now we're running out of time, but I just really quickly want to get your thoughts because you've also called for any rec uh, referendum to recognise Aboriginal people in the constitution to be delayed. Why is that? Um, his history tells us that referendum questions succeed only if they are <clears throat> advocated by a government that puts a yes case, uh, uh, by a conservative government and if there is no no case. And I think we all agree that not enough people understand the issue for it to go to the people anytime soon because um, it's a very complicated issue and not many people know about the race power. Um, Does that disappoint you that that's where we're at in Australia in 2012? I have to say I wasn't surprised. Marcia Langton, thank you for your time. Thank you.